Hey Math 43, I thought we would take a look at a chapter 12 problem, so a regression example. So over here on my right uh, is a word problem. This would be something very similar to what you'll see on midterm two. And over here is a bunch of data, and I'm using StatCrunch to crunch these numbers because there are so many data values. Um, I didn't want to put them in my lists. Um, but you, you could have done that as well. I'm just going to opt to do it on StatCrunch. So let's take a look at the context here. So throughout the semester, you've been hearing me prattle on about how important it is to be in class, be on time, ask questions, all of that. And I, I was curious, was what I was, uh, was the stuff that I was rattling on about, did I have any data to back it up? So I went ahead and I looked at our class data so far between my 8 a.m. class and my 10.30 class. So I took a look at all of the absences I had for the 67 students who were still registered. And I also took a look at your percentage grade, like where is your class standing as a percent um, in the class so far. So here are all of the data values, right? Now if I, if I just move this out a little bit so we can see it, actually I can move this out a lot so we can see it. Oops, excuse me, I'm going to not do that. Uh, so I have your number of absences in my first column, which would have been the equivalent of L1 if I was in my calculator, and I have your overall grade. So you can see that I have one student who's been absent one day this semester, and he or she is at an 84%. I've had another student who was absent 10 days this semester, and he or she is at 46%. And you can see me scrolling through all of that data. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll, I'll answer this question in part A first, but let, let's just make a scatter plot real quick. So let me put my x variable here and my y variable here. This would be the equivalent of making a scatter plot or a stat plot on your calculator. So if I just take a look at that scatter plot, uh, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but I can kind of see a negative linear relationship happening here. So I can see the fewer absences you have, the higher your grades tend to be. And the more absences you have, the lower your grades tend to be. So, so there is a scatter plot, but let's go ahead and get the LSRL. So let me go ahead and calculate this. And I obviously I don't expect you to know how to do this on StatCrunch. You would just be running a StatCalcate situation right here. So if I take a look at this, I can see well, here are my y-intercept, right, 88.01, and my slope of negative 3.8. Now, it depends on how many decimals you want to go to. I, I'm just going to go one decimal here. So you'll have to give me a moment. I, I have to put this in in LaTeX. That's the language we use here. So I can predict your overall grade. All right, if you tell me, well, let's see, our y-intercept was 88, I'll go one decimal, all right, just because I'm going to feel lazy today, minus 3.8, and then the independent or explanatory variable was number of absences. Let me make sure I spell that correctly, and let me just get a multiplication symbol in there so we have that as well. So there is the equation of my LSRL. And just taking a look at it, I have a hat over my y variable, I have my y-intercept, I have my slope, and then I have my x variable in words also. So that is a midterm level answer. And imagine taking your y equaling a plus bx from your calculator, finding your a value and your b value, right, substituting in 88 and negative 3.8, and then putting the words there. That's how you get to a midterm level answer. All right, the next thing says find the value of the correlation coefficient. Again, if you were on your calculator, stat calc 8, L1, L2, Y1. But over here, there is my correlation coefficient. And for, for social science problems, and I say social science because we're just looking at what's going on in this class. This isn't a physical science or a biological science. We're just looking socially. How, how often were you showing up in class? and what is your grade. This is actually a pretty high correlation coefficient. Um, the real world is pretty messy, so we don't tend to get really nice, strong correlation coefficients most of the time. So let me go ahead and write in my correlation coefficient. Now I also need to interpret it, so I need three adjectives. I would say there is a moderate, negative, linear relationship 
between, okay, our two numerical variables were the number of absences, of absences, and the percentage, or I'll say overall percentage grade for students in math 43 plus 43W. All right, so I've interpreted it. There's my sentence. I've got that one done. Now it says interpret the slope. So let's take a look here. The slope was equal to, what was that? Um, negative 3.8. All right, so if I wanted to think of the slope, let me just kick this out here. If I wanted to think of the slope as a fraction, let me turn this into a fraction. All right, I can always make anything a unit ratio. So we think of this as negative 3.8 over one, and then let's think about the units here. So let me go ahead and do another fraction. So the y units are percentages, right? And then the x units over here were number of absences, absences. Oh, and I have a little typo here. Let's see if we can find it. There, there, ah, I found it. I think this will make this work now. There we go, sorry about that. So I have, taking a look at this, for every one absence, it looks like your percentage grade goes down by about 3.8%. So let's, let's try and put this into context. So for every one day increase in the number of absences, the, ooh, I can't spell absences, excuse me. All right, the predicted average decrease in this case, because the slope is negative, uh, in overall grades is 3.8%. Right, so for every extra day, although that looks like for every I day, let's do for every one day. So for every one extra day that you're absent, it looks like at least we're predicting that your overall course grade goes down by about 3.8%. All right, so now this last one is, is the linear model a good fit for the data? So let's remind ourselves we need to look at the scatter plot. All right, I need to look at the R value and I need to look at the residual plot. Residual plot. And I'll put a question mark there. Those are the three factors that I'll expect you to comment on. And then keep in mind that the residual plot, that's, that's the big one. That's going to be like our red light, green light situation. All right, so we have the scatter plot here. And I would say the scatter plot is somewhat linear. It's not great. Right? It's not great and it's not bad. It's one of those medium faces. So I don't have my emojis up right now. But I would put like a medium face here. It's not perfect. But I can see a line-ish. And really, I can't see anything other than a line that doesn't look like a parabola, doesn't look like an exponential function. I can just kind of see that negative linear relationship happening. So here I would put, even though I don't have it, I'll put medium happy face. All right, and really that's, if I want to be technical, I'd give it the meh, like it's not good, it's not bad. All right, now my R value, if we remember, Right? My R value is negative 0.61. Again, we're at the moderate level, so that's why I put the meh face. I'm not sad, it's not weak, and I'm also not happy because the R value isn't strong, but it's moderate, so eh? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the residual plot. So if I wanna make a residual plot, let me get out of this, let me save these for a moment. All right, so let's go back to regression, and again, on your calculator, you would just, instead of graphing L1 against L2, you would graph L1 against the residuals. Well, we have the equivalent of that over here. I'm just gonna label the y-axis with residuals so you know what we're, we're graphing. If I go ahead and I compute that, you can't quite see it yet, but I'll go over here. All right, so that is my residual plot, right? You see number of absences and we see residuals here. And I cannot make out a pattern. So I'm gonna put here the residual plot is a hot mess. If you wanna sound fancier, you could say the residual plot is scattered. Scattered, <laughs> scattered. All right, and so working through that, since this, and again, I would actually put this as a happy face. 
I wish I had my emojis up. I don't, but what are you going to do? So at this point, because my residual plot is scattered, it's like a red light. We don't have to go further in this problem. So I would say the linear model is a good fit because the residual plot shows, oops, you can't see that. Let me see if I can scroll down a bit just so you can see the rest of this. I think I need to just extend to the next page. The residual plot shows no pattern. All right, so what this is really telling us is, hey, the linear model is okay, right? I said meh, but there's nothing better out there. So let me let me write this. This is just like an, a little extra, extra, extra. Read all about it, okay? So this is really telling us the linear model is an okay fit. All right, and the reason we know this is because the scatter plot was somewhat linear. And the R value was moderate. All right. But because there was no pattern oops, in the residual plot, we know there's not a better model out there. So we'll keep the linear model. All right. and, and this happens all the time in the real world. The, the linear model is the best one we've got. It's not the greatest thing ever, but it's, it's not too terrible at predicting. All right, so that's your look at a regression problem. You can, if you want, let me get rid of this, if you want to take a look at all of this data, Right? If you want to pause your screen and, and scroll through and put these data values, all 67 of them in L1 and L2, you're more than welcome to and you'll get the same result, or you should. But it's never a bad idea to just make sure you know how to practice this. Based on the answer in Part A and based on this R value, could you answer the rest of these questions? You'll want to make sure you can before your midterm. All right, so that's what I got. Chapter 12 problem, all done. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Oh, and come to class. All right, bye.